Hello everyone. Welcome to lesson 5 of our Spring Security course. So in this lesson, I'm going to focus on to the Spring Security capabilities in terms of uh, the different encoding mechanism or the password encoding mechanism it provides. I'm not going to get into the history of the password encoding and the different encoding algorithms. Um, just Google it and you will get uh, a lot of materials to read through it and uh, <clears throat> as an expectation i think at least you should go through one or two algorithms especially bcrypt which is the default implementation as of now to understand uh, what are the different parameters you can pass in order to customize it uh, to customize the encryption behavior for that algorithm all right uh, so in terms of the spring security um, so there is a it provides you an interface which is a password encoder interface and every implementation within the spring security is implementing this interface all right and uh, when it comes to the encoding uh, it's a one way transformation when uh, it comes to the spring security or in fact it's the industry standard as of now and the reason for that one is uh, you don't want to have a way to decrypt it right then it's not going to be a very secure algorithm so anyone have a uh, the same algorithms and same salt and other details they will be able to decrypt it right uh, so what happen is uh, when you register yourself or wherever you provide your uh, login details for the first time uh, based upon what what is the algorithm you have configured in your spring security application it uses that algorithm and encode your password and save it store it uh, into the underlying database so next time when you get into the uh, system you provide your username and password so we use the same encoding algorithm to again encode your new password or the password which you provided onto the login page we compare all the password which is stored at our end what you have provided what what is the encoding we got there we compare it if they, there is a match that means you have provided a valid credential so that's an overall or a high level workflow now uh, just one thing which you have to keep into mind and i'm very sure if you are uh, watching this tutorial you already have a basic understanding of the different algorithms uh, some of those algorithms are intentionally slow for example bcrypt it's a little slow um, um, and then it depends upon um, what is the the configurations which you have put in place number of iterations and other things and that is an intentional behavior it's not like they are slow because they are doing a lot of things that's an intentional behavior and the reason for that one is think about a, a attack which is being uh, if someone is trying to steal your password or they are trying to do something uh, with that one so if it's a the encoding mechanism slow uh, with, even with the sophisticated hardware and other things right uh, it will make it a little difficult for the attacker to to kind of uh, decrypt it because of the slowness and they they are not doing it manually right there is a some kind of a programs which are running into the system right so <clears throat> that's it as our kind of a basic uh, in setup or uh, understanding on that one so in terms of the different algorithm i think spring security uh, as of now supports most of the well known algorithms they have a, a encoder for those one uh, b b to b crypt uh, pvkdf2 s crypt sh256 i think even sh512 uh, is being supported and then uh, it's a flexible enough so if you want to have to introduce your own algorithm um, kind of encoding algorithm let's say you are already using it internally uh, you can you can inject that one or you can use that one so spring security provides that kind of um, uh, uh, features and the flexibility now uh, if you uh, before spring security 5 the way it stores or encrypt your password it was a little different uh, with the spring security 5 uh, there is an there is an introduction to the delegating password encoder so what happened internally is so before spring security 5 uh, you explicitly tell the uh, the system that you want to use a bcrypt or a pvk df2 and all those things but with this delegate password encoder it's a factory it has a certain set of uh, the encoders already configured for you and it has a default uh, encoder right uh, which is a bcrypt that will be written by default if you use that one 
and it also provide you a flexibility uh, in terms of uh, uh, let's say uh, you want to introduce or you want to add your own algorithm uh, encrypting encryption algorithm the other flexibility or a benefit out of it is let's say you have you want to have a two different um, encoder algorithms maybe you are migrating some uh, legacy things to your system so you can even achieve that one so uh, there are a number of different benefits of this uh, new introduction with the spring security 5 uh, for example right now we have these uh, different algorithms in the future there might be a new better more strong algorithms that will that will get into the picture so it's really easy uh, to change uh, kind of add those one with this new implementation right uh, even with the legacy format as was saying with the legacy formats it's easier with this uh, new implementation and the way it stored password internally is a little bit different <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm going to show that to you and uh, last uh, not the last but uh, this is again uh, a critical that upgradation is uh, really uh, easy with that one so let's do one thing uh, let's look into the code to understand the the password encoded uh, encoder and how spring security uh, support it internally so the first line represents a typical uh, configuration uh, before spring security 5 where you pass on um, the <coughs> type of encoder you want to use and if you look into the encoders right let me increase the size so this is an interface and every encoder within the spring security uh, kind of implement this interface and they have a very standard <coughs> set of methods you can go to th through those details now <coughs> with the spring security 5 they have introduced this factory and as i said right by default it gives you the bcrypt uh, and then you can always inject your own uh, encryption logic and you can also get the um, the different encoders uh, password encoders out of it implementation of our uh, create delegation password encoder and they have a different so this is the list of uh, all the different uh, algorithms or the encoding algorithms they support and if you see uh, by default they are returning bcrypt because that's the default uh, imp, uh, kind of a um, encoding algorithm supported by spring security all right and then um, <coughs> sorry uh, the, your process is very uh, kind of it's not a, a very different process in terms of let's say this is our registration process right so what i'm doing is i'm just encoding password right so password encoder is the interface i am injecting it based upon what kind of uh, implementation i am using i'm just encoding the password and storing it into the database and just to save the time uh, i have uh, done one registration to give you an, uh, some idea about it okay all right so that is the data which is saved in my system or the password i'm we are more interested into the password so since we are using the uh, the spring security 5 and new approach so the interesting thing is this bcrypt uh, with this curly braces if you uh, if you don't use it right let's go back there and if you use the first line code let's say you comment this out and you use this one okay so it will store the data in the same format but you won't find this bcrypt and that's a that's a new way how it stores because uh, as i said right it can it can support a multiple encryption so it it basically store that a little bit information about that one all right uh, and the rest of the things are going to be same regardless of you are into spring Sec before spring security 5 or you are using spring security uh, 5 all right now when it comes to this password uh, don't kind of assume that it's an it's your password which is encrypted most of the modern um, algorithms the encoding algorithms also contain some information or a metadata information about the algorithm for example uh, the first two way right with this dollar sign the two way represents the and uh, the 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 algorithm version there are two way and i think there is two b so it represents that right now this uh, this encoding happened with the version 2a 10 demonstrates the the strength uh, like the strength that has been used 
i am not going to get into that details but if you are interested uh, go to the documentation of vcrypt and you will understand what that uh, what does that mean some part of the other if you see after 10 there is a other part which is a representation of assault and all those things okay so just let's do one thing so that's a that's not exactly the same password but it's uh, this password is generated using a bcrypt as an uh, encryption algorithm right so the color combination will give you a clear picture what represents what uh, in terms of the the first part represents your algorithm version as i said right there are a, it, it can there can be a multiple variations so it represents the two way that is used now the 10 represent the strength uh, and again uh, just i'm taking an example of bcrypt uh, there are a uh, different parameters which you can pass for example number of iteration strength uh, uh, your salt and all those things if you don't pass those information the default will be taken right so 10 represent your strength uh, which is the default value because we are not providing anything uh, the next one the blue uh, in the picture represents the salt so the salt it is using to kind of uh, hash the password right again we are not passing any salt custom salt you can do it uh, it it depends upon um, upon your requirement so it's using the default uh, salt uh, as part of the algorithm process and the last part actually represent your hash password uh, so even if you're using this one or you're using any modern algorithm right most of it contains that metadata information all right uh, so that's an kind of a high level of overview or introduction to uh, how the spring security handles the uh, the password encoding it's very straightforward in terms of how you want to use it let's say even if you want to have your own uh, encoding algorithms uh, it provides you all flexibility uh, to inject that one right so let's say you want to inject your own um, uh, encoding mechanism you already have some kind of uh, your enterprise standards right all you have to do is create that encoder implement the password encoder mechanism and then you can say uh, either you you can basically return that one or use the password encoder factory override it in your uh, app configuration right so all you have to do is i'm just copy pasting it okay just to give you an idea okay you create this one all right and then you inject uh, based upon your requirements so you can always say encoder dot something based upon uh, your implementation class you can say my enterprise encoding right and then in 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 the map inject your enterprise coding and then finally you are able to uh, get that one all right so that set are kind of uh, uh, the platform in the next one i'm going to talk about the registration process uh, that process is not directly kind of it's uh, not going to is not related to the spring security but that's the starting point actually because once you have a user information uh, that's the point where user want to log in into the system and the entire uh, our kind of authentication and authorization mechanism will get into into the picture I hope that will this uh, lesson have given you some kind of uh, overview uh, about the Spring security capabilities. If you uh, like this tutorial, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel.